Hello and welcome to the latest entry in the Exer Studios vlog. My name is Piotr and I am the community manager at Exer Studios. In the previous video we talked about wind events that make the world of Galatea 37 more realistic and believable. However, it would be difficult to notice the real effects of wind if not for vegetation. And there are a lot of things that go into creating a vegetation system just like the one that we have in the Rift Breaker. This is quite a big topic that we will try to cover today. First of all, let's talk about grass. It doesn't seem like much, you know, it's just tufts of green leaves that stick from the ground and they don't seem to have any particular purpose otherwise than the visual one. Our level designers have various models to choose from. We generally separate them by size, small, medium, large and very large. But apart from size, they also differ in shape and texture. The size obviously changes the look and feel of the area, but it's also very relevant when it comes to the forces that we apply to grass and other elements of vegetation wind, shockwaves, and bending. We are going to take a look at each of those forces one by one. Let's start with the wind. Our engine, the Schmetterling, currently allows us to place two kinds of wind on the scene, global and local. Local wind only affects elements in a certain radius, a tornado is a good example. Here you can clearly see the limits of the tornado's range on the grass. Global wind, on the other hand, affects all the vegetation objects on the scene. It is responsible for all the natural swaying, bending and wavy nature of the vegetation elements that occurs naturally. Regardless of the type of wind we're talking about, it is regulated by a whole lot of parameters. It allows us to simulate the real-life flow of air. Now, we are not going to go into much detail about this, but it allows us to simulate the slight variations between certain points on the map. We can represent these forces by vectors. Then you will see that they vary slightly when it comes to force and direction. Now, let's talk about shockwaves. Shockwaves happen whenever something explodes, and you know how we feel about explosions. Shockwaves come in various flavors as well. The first one is called an instant shockwave. The instant shockwave's force is applied, well, instantly, to all the objects in the radius of the explosion. The other type of shockwave is called physical shockwave. It occurs after the initial instant shockwave and it takes the form of a ring that increases in diameter over time, moving away from the center of the explosion. As it spreads out, you can see how it affects all the vegetation elements in the radius. Now, let's talk about bending force. As the name suggests, it bends the objects away from the source, and the source can be anything that we apply a bending component to. Examples of entities with this component is Mr. Riggs, well, the enemies, and projectiles. The bending force is the strongest towards the center of the object with bending component in its properties and gets progressively weaker as we move away from it. We can represent the range of the bending force by drawing a sphere on the screen. When Mr. Riggs shoots a rocket, you can see the affected area around it. The tufts of grass that are the nearest to the center of the sphere get bent very much, whereas the ones that just slightly touch it get bent only slightly. Now, what do we get when we apply wind forces, bending forces and shock waves to the game world? A glitchy mess, that's what we get. Instead of doing that, whenever game logic updates, it takes a weighted average of those forces 
giving them a different level of importance. The result of this operation is applied to vegetation, and it can result in three different states. Idle, bending or recovering. Idle means simply that no wind forces are currently affecting the entity. Bending means that a bending force is being applied to this object at the moment and recovering means that the object was being bent just a moment ago but now it is trying to return to its original state. In order to achieve the effect of the grass swaying realistically and coming back to its original position, well, not only grass, we apply this function. It approximates the restoring force quite well for our uses. The bending action, however, is carried out by a vertex shader. A vertex shader is a program that takes the vertex of the objects and manipulates them in some way. In the case of this particular vertex shader, it takes the vertex of the vegetation object, a tuft of grass or a tree, and bends it according to parametric square function. The values of bending and restoring vary slightly from object to object, and we have to set them individually, but it gives them a nice look and feel and you see that the objects are really different from each other and not just copies with different skin. There is one more thing that we allow you to do with the vegetation in the Rift Breaker and that is setting it on fire. Each entity that is set as flammable in its properties can be set on fire and it can spread fire as well. We can tweak the probability of an object catching fire once it's in contact with a fire source, such as a flamethrower, and we can also tweak how long it is going to burn after it's been set on fire. Every time game logic is updated, we gather information which objects are currently on fire and in range of open fire. Then we perform a roll, just like in D&D, to see whether the object that was in range has caught fire or not. Some objects are obviously impossible to set on fire, like rocks, but others catch fire quite easy. All of that was being handled by flammable component. Once the entity is burning, we apply burning component to it. It is another set of properties that affects, well, burning objects. The affected piece of vegetation becomes the source of fire itself. We can determine how far it can spread its flames. We also control the burning rate, which is the frequency with which an object tries to spread fire to other entities. Of course, it is accompanied by a lot of particle effects and dissolving the mesh. What is noteworthy? The spread of fire is affected by the wind. We hope that you enjoyed this presentation of the vegetation system in the Rift Breaker. And if you did, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also, remember to join our streams Tuesday Mixer, Thursday Twitch. If you haven't done so already, join our Discord where you can get the chance to take part in the alpha test of the game. For now, that is all. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.